Tesla taps tiny startups technology to build cheaper and cleaner batteries. Tesla bought its battery patent application, I mean this one that I'm about to tell you, for three dollars welcome back dear friends this is armin harayan from torquenews.com if you are here first time please subscribe to our channel for daily tesla news and ring the bell so you don't miss my next tesla coverage and also give us thumbs up and like this video if you find it uh, uh, informative and we would appreciate if you would share in social media so um mark harris from TechCrunch details the saying when elon musk stood on stage at tesla's battery day in september and promised to cut lithium-ion battery prices in half he claimed some of the savings would come from reinventing the dirty and complex process of making their nickel metal cathodes basically reinventing the way they make tesla batteries it's insanely complicated like digging a ditch filing it in and digging a ditch again he said at the event so we looked at the entire value chain and said how can we make this as simple as possible said musk the simplest route to it to appears it appears to involve a small Canadian battery startup or at least its patent application. Two weeks before the battery day, Tesla purchased a number of patent applications from Spring Power International, a small company based just outside Toronto, for a grand total of three dollars, according to public records. One of those applications details an innovative process similar to one that Drew Baglino, Tesla's senior vice president of engineering, described on stage at Tesla factory in Fremont, California on battery day. Buying the patent application means that when the patent itself was finally granted in January, it was issued to Tesla with no mention to Spring Power. Harris explains from TechCrunch that manufacturing cathodes for electric vehicle batteries traditionally generates large quantities of contaminated water, up to 4,000 gallons containing ammonia, metal particles, and toxic chemicals for every ton of cathode material produced. Spring Power's process cleverly recirculates the chemical solution, removing the need for expensive water treatment. If this all works well, that means Tesla will need less water, which is a big issue at Giga Berlin at water consumption. Those of you who have been following Giga Berlin know that the water consumption is a big issue at Giga Berlin. So now Spring Power's process cleverly recirculates the chemical solution, removing the need for expensive water treatment. Baglino's presentation also depicted a method that also reuses water and produces no effluent. In addition to cutting operational costs by more than 75%, he said, we can also use that same process to directly consume the metal powder coming out of recycled electric vehicle and grid storage batteries. It now seems likely that Tesla may have bought more than just Spring Power's intellectual property. A week before battery day, Spring Power International's website was replaced by a single holding page. And in the months since then, several Spring Power researchers have altered their LinkedIn profiles to indicate that they are now working at Tesla. Spring Power International CEO Michael Wang, whose own LinkedIn page now features dozens of updates from Tesla staffers, including Baglino, did not respond to a request for comment and calls to the company's switchboard went unanswered, says TechCrunch. A senior Spring Power International executive reached, reached by phone would neither confirm nor deny Tesla's purchase and referred TechCrunch to Tesla's public affairs team. And as you know, Tesla no longer has a press office and emails to the company did not receive a reply. Spring Power International was founded in March, uh, founded in March 2010 in part by Chinese battery firm Hick Power International as a research arm for its Spring Power subsidiary in Shenzhen. But High Power walked away from Spring Power International within six months riding of $100,000 investment after deciding its technologies were too far from commercialization. It looks like Tesla, on the other hand, had a different view on this. James Prola, 
an entrepreneur and in residence at the Canadian government funded program stepped in to mentor the young company. He helped it secure some small grants and ultimately a $3.4 million Canadian dollar sustainable technology award in 2018. However, he told TechCrunch that um, he has not talked to anyone in Spring Power International since late 2020. So it's again not confirmed. Sbrola was not surprised to hear that the company might have been purchased by Tesla. Here's what he said. It's a group of smart people, no question about it, Sprola said. Technology like Spring Powers gives uh, Spring Powers gives tremendous upside with a reduced environmental footprint and being attached to a large organization makes scaling much quicker and easier. If as seems likely Spring Power International has been acquired by Tesla, it would join only a dozen of so others, including another Canadian battery company, Hebar, bought in similar uh, stealth in 2019. Elon Musk has long looked north of the border of lithium-ion battery expertise. In 2015, Tesla signed a five-year exclusive partnership with Jeff Dunn, a leading battery researcher and professor at Dalhousie University in Nova Scotia. Dunn is named on a number of recent Tesla battery patents, and in January, Tesla renewed Dunn's contract for another five years. Musk is on a year-long push to bring battery production in-house and scale back Tesla's uh, reliance on its current suppliers, Panasonic, LG Chem, and Cattle. Now that we have this process, we're going to start building our own cathode facility in North America, said Baglino on Battery Day. Musk added that the combined benefits of Tesla's new battery technologies could enable a $25,000 vehicle, but cautioned not to expect too much too soon. It will take us probably a year to 18 months to start realizing these advantages and three years of thereabouts to fully realize them. Perhaps by that time, Spring Power International's role will be a little clearer in Tesla. Now, Speaking of that, let me give you also some updates about uh, uh, about Tesla Giga Berlin because there is some conflicting information coming there. Um, Joey Klender has published an interesting story in Tesla Radi saying Tesla Giga Berlin isn't facing a six, mo six month delay based on what a German minister said. Well, let me give you some background first. Tesla Giga Berlin is the electric automaker's first European production facility, and it is slated to begin production on the Model Y crossover later this year. However, reports out of Germany indicate that Tesla's German EV manufacturing facility is poised to be delayed six months due to the numerous constraints that deal with battery pack output. However, Brandenburg economic minister Jörg Steinbach, who has been one of Tesla's most vocal supporters in their quest to open the German uh, Gigafactory, isn't buying the six-month delay story at all. Steinbach still believes that Tesla is on pace for a late summer or early autumn start in Giga Berlin. The delays at Giga Berlin are not unfamiliar territory for those who have been following the site's development over the past 18 months. After being announced by Elon Musk in late 2019, Tesla started land preparation in January 2020, only to begin erecting the main frame of the facility just a few months later. The site has been subjected to numerous short-term delays due to the COVID-19 uh, and some application holdups that needed preliminary approval before Tesla could move forward. However, recent reports from the Germany suggest a more long-term delay is in store for Tesla because battery pack output will not allow for vehicle production. Many outlets have cited Automobile Woch's story that says the German manufacturing plant Giga Berlin will not become operational until January 2022. And date, and even though just last week during the quarter one 2021, Elon Musk uh, and it earnings the call, Elon Musk said that limited production would occur at both Giga Berlin and Giga Texas this year. Here's what Musk said Musk said, We're building factories as quick as we can. Both Tesla, both Texas and Berlin are progressing well, and we expect to have initial limited production from those factories this year and volume production from Texas and Berlin next year. Now, 
that the report has been in the loop for a few days, plenty of people are finding out that Giga Berlin is apparently facing the six-month delay. One of the people disagreeing with those reports is Brandenburg's economic minister, Jörg Steinbau, a well-known politician who has been very supportive of Tesla. Steinbach told Tesla Radi earlier uh, yesterday that he does not know where the six-month delay rumors are culminating from. Still, he expects Giga Berlin to face approximately three months of delay time. I don't have the faintest idea of how anyone can come up with a six-month delay, Steinbach said to Tesla Radi in an interview. If nothing happens out of the ordinary, I still expect a start of production in late summer of or early autumn, the economic minister said. So I think we're going to wait and see, friends. While Tesla has expressed some frustration with the German approval process, it is not unordinary for things to take several years to earn uh, ultimate approval. Tesla Radi spoke to German engineer and Tesla enthusiast Alex Voigt last week, who indicated that many projects take three to five years to gain ultimate approval. Now, will this mean that Tesla will need three to five years to operate Giga Berlin? I hope not. Well, let me know what your thoughts are, friends. This is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. Have a great day. Please subscribe to our channel and also like this video if you found it informative. And I'll see you soon in our next report. God bless you and peace be with all of you.